Whew. All right, video time. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the new iPhone 13s are available to order. And I just decided to order uh, what I think will probably end up being my main device for this whole entire year, uh, the iPhone 13 Pro. And I kind of wanted to talk about why I chose the iPhone 13 Pro out of every other iPhone in the lineup. But I do also have another uh, iPhone 13 mini coming, which could potentially end up being my main phone, depending on a few things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. But, you know, full disclosure, I'm intentionally going into this iPhone cycle, this iPhone season, with the intention of using the iPhone 13 Pro as my main device. Now, let me rewind back a bit because uh, last year, you might recall if you watched a lot of my videos on the iPhone 12 series, that I got every single iPhone 12 model to try out. The regular 12, the 12 Pro, uh, the 12 mini, and the 12 Pro Max. I was very spoiled that year, but I actually tried out all four different models and I walked away from that uh, basically sticking to the iPhone 12 mini. That was my favorite iPhone from last year. Now, because I am a tech reviewer, I did switch between the phones every so often just to check up on them, just to see how they were doing as the year progressed, as we got more software updates. And I would say the two main phones I ended up using was the 12 mini and the 12 Pro Max. Kind of funny, right? I went from the smallest side spectrum all the way to the biggest side spectrum, and I barely spent any time with the uh, regular 12 and even less time probably with the uh, 12 Pro. Uh, now, the main reason I chose the mini last year was completely form factor. I love, I still love that 5.4 inch iPhone 12 mini form factor. I found the display to be big enough for daily use. Again, you know, we're talking about a phone display size that is basically almost the same size as the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Pluses, 8 Pluses we had uh, just a few years ago. So I found the 5.4 inch screen to be totally usable. And then that was packed into a body size that was actually smaller than something like an iPhone 6 or an iPhone SE and just slightly bigger than an iPhone 5S. So I really enjoyed that form factor. It was a super great phone to use one handed. I loved putting it in my pocket. Like it would just like completely drop into the pocket. No chance of it poking out or falling out and uh, being able to type one handed, all that stuff. It really reminded me of the glory days of the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5 design. And I still love it. But after using the mini for a while, I think the biggest hang up for that phone, and I think almost every tech reviewer would agree with me here, was the battery life. You see, the mini had the same exact feature set as the regular iPhone 12. So, you know, like the cameras were great on it. Uh, the OLED display looked fantastic. Um, the speaker quality was a little bit worse just because of the, you know, physical dimensions of the phone. But the main reason why uh, I'm, less on the mini train this year is because of the battery life. Um, I felt like, you know, with the mini, um, maybe I could get through a whole day of use with light to medium usage, but like barely, like by the end of the day, I would have like 1% battery life. Like I would have to rush to the charger at the end of the day, make sure it was charging. And then on heavy days, forget about it. Like. Um, it would never get me through a heavy day of usage. If I was playing any sort of games on it, if I was watching a lot of YouTube videos, the battery would just completely drain halfway through the day. In fact, I kind of said like, if you were getting the mini, you had to kind of change the way you used your phone if you've been used to some of these bigger batteries from the past year. It really did kind of remind me of going back to the older style of phones where it's like, halfway through the day, you should be prepared to charge your phone up. And, and that wasn't a problem for me because as you know, like we have been kind of staying at home mostly during, you know, this whole ordeal going on. So I've always been very close to a charger and, you know, naturally with my job as being a full-time YouTuber, I usually work from home. So I'm usually next to wall outlets and stuff like that. If I had to sit by my computer and edit a video, I could easily plop it down on a wireless charger or plug it in for like 30 minutes. It wasn't the biggest deal to me in terms of battery life. But on the opposite spectrum, when I did use the iPhone 12 Pro Max as my main phone, I really enjoyed like the all day battery life you got out of that. Like no matter what I did to that 12 Pro Max, whether it was like watching video, playing games, like I could not kill that battery in a day. Like I would confidently end the day with at least 20% battery life, even after taking like a bunch of pictures and videos. 
And that was probably the aspect of the Pro Max that I appreciated the most was just the battery life. It wasn't even the 6.7 inch screen, which, you know, it is beautiful. It's a nice OLED screen and you do get a lot more real estate, but based on form factor alone, I would go with the mini, but based on the feature set, I like the Pro Max's better battery life. And I did also like the camera system there. I found that the camera system was just a little bit better than the minis with its larger sensor. And then I also appreciated having that extra 2.5X telephoto lens. There was a couple of times where I would see something far away, like an animal. And if I had my mini on me, I couldn't really get a good shot of it. But if I had the Pro Max on me, you know, I would be able to at least get in a little bit closer and get a, a slightly better shot and stuff like that. And if you just listen to what I said, even though they both both kind of sound uh, diametrically opposed to each other. Uh, the reason I went with the 13 Pro this year is because I felt like it was a compromise between the features that I wanted the most. I wanted a smaller form factor, which granted the you know 13 Pro isn't as small as the mini, but it's also a mid-sized phone. It's not nearly as big as the 12 Pro Max, which you know could feel quite ridiculous in my hands and. Uh, sometimes, like if I was wearing like jeans or just a little bit too tight, uh, it did not fit well in my pocket. So with the 13 Pro, the reason why I went for it um, was because Apple really improved the batteries this year on all of their phones. So uh, Apple is saying that the regular 13 Pro is gonna get an additional 1.5 hours of battery life. And that sounded good enough to me where I'm looking at the battery ratings and I'm figuring that the battery life on the 13 Pro is going to get me close to what the 12 Pro Max got me last year. Another reason I went with the 13 Pro is because the camera system this time is completely the same as the Max version. The reason why I was tempted to go for the Max version last year is because the regular 12 Pro had a slightly worse camera system, and that's not the case anymore. If you get the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max, you're getting the same exact feature set in terms of cameras. And when I'm looking at the 13 Mini's camera system this year, even though it's getting that great 12 Pro Max camera, and I'm sure it's gonna be a great camera for most people, I was really blown away by the feature set that Apple presented with the 13 Pro and Pro Max camera system. Um, number one, the wide angle is improved. It's gonna let in a little bit more light, which is always nice for those low light situations. The telephoto lens is moving up in the zoom range. It's moving up to a 3X from a 2.5X. So not like a big deal, but again, we are getting closer here. We are getting a better, uh, field of view with 77 millimeters to get closer up and also kind of to introduce some natural bokeh without the, you know, artificial portrait mode one. So pictures will probably look a little bit less flat with that zoom range. And probably most importantly for me actually is the ultra wide angle camera. So there's a big jump this year with the pro phones getting a much faster aperture at F 1.8. So that should let in a lot more light. And I found that the ultra wide angle cameras always seem to suffer the most in the lower lighting situations. And on top of that, the focus distance on these ultra wides is going to be so close this year that the ultra wide camera can now double as a macro lens. And you know, I don't wanna buy into Apple's marketing here. They claim that they shoot everything on the iPhone cameras themselves. I have no reason not to believe them. I don't think anyone's ever found that they were deceptive in that marketing. But again, these are marketing shots, but I looked on Apple's website of this piano shot of where they're recording a video with that macro lens and it looks absolutely fantastic. Like I'm looking at this shot and going, that was taken on a smartphone and it just blew me away how cool that shot looked. And I would love to try and imitate that uh, with some smartphone footage on the 13 Pro and then also get some uh, really close up detail shots uh, macro photography wise. And being able to do that on a phone camera without necessarily having to bust out my mirrorless camera and then switch the lens out to a macro lens and then having to switch it back out, you know, getting rid of all those little steps, just being able to take my phone out, get right into that macro mode, get maybe like a quick 10 second or 30 second shot of something cool. Um, I think that is a really cool feature, even more so than some of the other exclusive features that the pro phones have with the camera system now, like ProRes. I think it's cool for the people that wanna use ProRes or people that need ProRes, if you even need it. But for me, I don't even use ProRes on my 
expensive $3,500 camera with like an external recorder. I think H.265 uh, works fine for me. And especially on like the M1 Max, like it decodes everything so quickly that I really don't feel like I'm getting a benefit using a codec that takes up much more storage that is just gonna get compressed anyway as soon as I upload it to YouTube. So I'm not seeing the benefits of ProRes on this phone. I'm glad it's there as an option. I'll test it out and I'll be willing to admit if I'm wrong, but in terms of the feature set that I think is important, um, I'm not necessarily like crazy for it. Um, the other big thing with this year's phones on the Pro models for a lot of people is the faster 120 hertz refresh rate, the ProMotion uh, refresh rate that can dynamically change from 10 hertz to 120 hertz. And this is a feature that has been on the iPad Pro for a while. It's also been on other Android phones for I think like the past two years now, but this is Apple's first time implementing it at least on their iPhones. And I like the faster refresh rate on the iPad Pros, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not like, oh my God, it's a feature I can't see. Like I can clearly see the difference. But I gotta say, like, in the past, what, like, three or four years since the iPad Pros have had a ProMotion display, whenever I'm switching back and forth between my iPad Pro and my iPhone, I don't think I've ever once thought, oh, the refresh rate on the phone is too slow, it's, it's too juddery, it's too laggy, like, the experience is smooth regardless. Like, iOS is pretty smooth when you're doing scrolling, when you're seeing animation, so, don't get me wrong, I think it's gonna be improved on the Pro Series phones now with the faster refresh rate. I'm gonna be able to see it. I can see it on the iPad, but I wouldn't actually choose that as an exclusive feature. Like if you gave me a iPhone 12 or an iPhone 13 mini uh, with the same camera features as the Pro phones and the same battery life, and you said the only difference was that the mini had a 60 Hertz display and the Pro phones had a 120 Hertz display. And even if you price them the same price, right? Like put them at the same price, I would actually go for the mini in that instance. Like that's, that's how much, or at least my perception of right now of how much I care about the 120 Hertz refresh rate. I think it's nice, but ultimately I think other features are way more important. It's kind of like a bonus, right? It's like icing on the top of the cake. I'm not gonna hate it, but I wouldn't necessarily pay like 30 extra dollars for that cake. Now I want cake. But yeah, at least to me, uh, looking at this phone lineup this year, um, looking at all the phones, I really do think that the 13 Pro is the sweet spot. And I really like that Sierra blue color. I, I ordered it in that model and I got 256 gigabytes. I was thinking about going with 512, but the more I thought about it, again, going back to ProRes, the more I realized I'm probably not gonna use it but at least I do want the option to try out 4K ProRes, which you can't do on the 128 gigabyte model. So that's why I went for the 256 gigabyte model. But because of the battery life improvements on the 13 Pro, uh, because of the form factor being in between the size of the Pro Max and the Mini, and because of that camera, that camera sounds really good on paper. Again, I can't really judge it because I don't have it but if it's an improvement over the 12 Pro Max camera from last year and all these features work like Apple says it does, especially like the uh, cinematic mode, that's gonna be on all the iPhones, but the cinematic mode, uh, the more and more I see about it, the more I read about it, the more excited I am for it. And I really hope the bokeh effect looks good because we've kind of been watching these effects on like smaller screens. So hopefully it actually looks good when I put it on my Mac or I put it on like a bigger TV. But the fact that you can get that blurry cinematic look, if you want to call it that, and also change the focus points in post after you're done editing it. So you can actually shoot something. And then like, if you didn't like how, you know, maybe you meant to blur out something else, you can actually apparently change that in post. Uh, that's really cool. Like you could like mess up a shot potentially and then be like, you know what? I actually wanted the focus here. And apparently the iPhone is going to be able to record all that data and then you can edit the focus. like that's kind of mind blowing in a way. So those cinematic modes, really excited for. The camera features themselves, I'm super excited for. And that's kind of how I landed on this middle ground compromise with the 13 Pro series. Now, I'm willing to admit, uh, if some of these camera features don't blow me away, I also have to acknowledge that I did order a 13 mini as a backup. This could potentially be the last mini iPhone in Apple's lineup. And because I liked the form factor so much last year at the 12 mini, I really wanted to just own a 13 mini in my personal collection. 
But I do have to acknowledge that Apple says they improved the 13 mini battery life by 1.5 hours. And if you're going by Apple's official ratings on their website, they now claim that the 13 mini has the same battery life as the regular size 12 from last year, which was good enough for me. So if these camera features aren't what they're cracked up to be with the macro and the improved sensor and the, you know, three times X on the telephone, all that stuff I just talked about, no need to reiterate. If that isn't all it's cracked up to be, I think I will potentially switch back to the 13 mini, but uh, I'm not going it. I'm not going into this iPhone cycle thinking that. Like I'm expecting these camera features to be good enough to where I'm gonna stick with the 13 Pro. But hey, if they aren't, I get to mention that in a review, and I get to stick uh, with the 5.4 inch form factor that I love so much from last year. But yeah, that's my thought process around why I ordered the 13 Pro and the 13 Mini, and why I intend to use the 13 Pro as my main device for 2021 and I guess 2022. Uh, you know, there was no script for this video, so sorry if it seemed like a little weird and the cadence and stuff like that. I just wanted to go from the heart this time. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this new style of video. It's actually a lot easier for me to do if I just talk straight from my head uh, rather than like planning a bunch of stuff. Uh, so let me know what you thought of it. If you liked it, give me a like and I'll know to make more of these types of videos. If you wanna see more from the channel, including the future iPhone 13 Pro coverage, see if I was right about the phone, if I was wrong about the phone, make sure you're subscribed. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Oh, let me know, uh, what iPhone model are you planning on going with this year? Did you actually order an iPhone model today? And let me know which one you got and which storage configuration and which color. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. See, I didn't need a script for that. I didn't need a script for that. I say it all the time. I'm a natural.